Hello, welcome to the channel. This is our very first video. This is Christo's Violin Shop. Uh, just so for a brief introduction, again, this is the first video. I'm going to stumble a lot and uh, hopefully we can get through the video. I really wanted to kind of push this out because of certain things going on in the world. We need to kind of learn how to deal with cleaning our instruments without damaging them. So that's why we're putting out this video now. Um, a little bit about myself, I'm Christo. I am the owner of the Oklahoma Strings Violin Shop in Oklahoma, of course. Uh, my training is from the Chicago School of Violin Making and I graduated in 2013. Before that, I also have a degree in violin performance. I've played on cruise ships, I've played in symphony orchestras. Currently, I play in the Enid Symphony Orchestra. Uh, I've also taught privately. I've taught in high school, college. Be beyond that, I did teach when I was in Chicago a little bit but all private lessons. I originally wanted to be an orchestra teacher, but the classroom setting scared me. So now I work pretty much by myself with my assistant, making instruments, fixing them, repairing them, doing work for the schools throughout Oklahoma. Uh, and about the shop, Oklahoma Strings Violin Shop was founded about 30 years ago by a, name, a man named Joseph. And he and his wife set this shop up to be a really a good place for music teachers. and. It was meant to service the, the schools and the students in the area. And then beyond that, it's actually expanded. Now I serve, service the instruments all throughout Oklahoma. So I do quite a bit of drive. So why did I make this channel? This channel, I decided to go ahead and create this because I've had a lot of teachers and individuals ask me what, what kinds of things can I tell them as far as repair work, different tips and tricks they can do on the road. What happens if a fingerboard falls off? What happens if the bridge falls? What do I do about the sound post, the tailpiece? Why is this tailpiece better than that tailpiece? Why is, are these strings good? Why are these strings maybe not so good for this instrument? And, and the biggest one, what instrument do I need to get as a beginner instrument? So I've decided to go ahead and create this channel to just be an outlet and something that people can use as a resource for maybe comparing instruments, comparing strings. Um, and one of the big things that we'll be doing is going over repair work and just following me as I do repairs on various instruments. Um, but in the meantime, the biggest question right now is how do I clean my instrument? And there's a lot of information going around on, on Facebook, on various forums, and, and just word of mouth. It's, you know, what, what do I do? So what I've decided to do is make this video. And what I'm actually going to do is uh, we're going to clean an instrument. We're going to um, do as much basic cleaning as we can to, to help prevent the spread of germs. Now, I'm not going to make, and, and please, do take this as, as, it, as it is, at face value. I'm not a doctor, and I don't know anything about medicine and medical, and I, I certainly haven't taken this to any hospital. What I will say is just going by off of some of the guidelines and what we normally do anyway, um, I can tell you that this is a good preventative measure. I'm not going to say with confidence that this is actually killing and all of the disease and all the viruses and everything. So do, do keep that in mind. Um, when in doubt, you know, set it, set it aside, quarantine it, take it into a shop, have the instrument professionally cleaned, and we'll go over that as well. What I'm going to show you are different levels of cleaning. So the first one, of course, is what you can do as the average person. The next one is what the teachers can do and what I would highly recommend having your teachers do. The third one is what I actually do as a professional cleaner or luthier and what we do whenever we have an instrument here to clean. I'll do one of those briefly. Um, and then, uh, just to let you know, anything above a certain price point is going to be something co completely different, and we have to take them each on an individual basis. So, in general, if you're violin or your viola, cello, eh, maybe not bass, basses are kind of expensive just to begin with, but basically if you have a violin and you spent less than $300 on it, you're fairly safe with most of the things that I'll, I'll show you, and I'll, and I'll tell you what's safe and what's not. Um, if you have something that's more than $300 but less than 1000 then uh, it's kind of iffy. Still use caution, and, and when in question, always take it to a luthier. Anything above $1,000, just take it to a luthier. Don't even try to do any of this by yourself. Um, just because there's different varnishes at that point. You either you can have oil varnish, you can have spirit varnish, you can have hopefully not lacquer, but mm, the cheaper stuff is lacquer. That's why the cheaper stuff is safer. So anyway, so first things. I've got some of the different things that we've seen. So, number one, water. So I've got a little bottle here of water. Just uh, good old-fashioned H2O. Next, we have germ juice. This is just your 
average hand sanitizer comes in a bottle. You can get a little thing like, like this one here. Um, we'll see what happens, but I, I usually say, you know, don't do it. And we'll, we'll talk about why. Okay, next we have a green cleaner. Um, these are multi-purpose cleaners. You can usually get them in, in, the, in the store. Um, usually diluted. This one's a diluted one. Still, we're going to show you that. Um, and then we get to my favorite, alcohol. Just uh, rubbing alcohol. And uh, the short answer is don't do it. Don't do it. Do not do it. But I'll tell you where you can do it. So uh, the next, we have some polish. Now, there's different versions of it. Um, these are two that, that I make here in the shop. There are different combinations of these things. Basically, you have a something that's going to polish the instrument, and we'll talk about what that actually means. And sometimes you have something that's going to clean it. And often it's a two-part thing. And both of these are different um, ratios of the mixture of cleaner and polish. But this is the step where if you have something more than $1,000, don't do it. Just, just don't do it. There's, there's too many things that could go wrong, and I'll show you a little bit about that. The next thing, this one's actually really popular right now, cleaning wipes. So I'm going to show you why this may or may not be a good idea and what it's going to do. And um, yeah, okay, so we've got that. Next we have what we're going to actually clean with. There's paper towels. Now, uh, I know a lot of people who might actually have experience cleaning instruments might cringe when I show paper towels. Now, the reason is because paper towels and basically any kind of paper product um, has a chance to scratch the varnish, and that does dull things out. Anything, anytime you had scratches to a shiny surface, it's going to make it dull. Uh, that being said, in general, especially since the majority of people watching this are actually going to be school teachers or individuals with maybe not so expensive instruments, it's not going to hurt it too much. And, and I'll show you why. Just don't use it dry. You don't want to use a dry paper towel on any kind of finish because it, it will scratch. Now, the other thing, of course, are ni really nice cloths. Now, these are just basically t-shirt material, but anything that's cotton in general is going so, to work. Let's get started. So, first thing that we want to do is I'm going to just show you what you can clean, what is safe to clean. So, we got an instrument right here. Uh, and now this one is one that's it's not in great condition as you can see and uh, this is one that I have set aside and it is pretty filthy just so you can see on there and I chose this one because number one you have a lot of rosin buildup right in here and you can see where it's kind of shiny um, shiny up in this area and then as we go down towards the F holes it gets really really dull that's where all the, the grime and filth a lot of that's built up rosin, some some dirty finger juice, and just the sweat. It, it's it's not good. Now, that is something that I would say take this to a professional. Let the luthier clean it. Now, the reason is because anytime you have to take off this much stuff, you're going to remove some varnish. It's going to damage the varnish. You know, no matter how careful you are, it, it will probably damage the varnish at least a little bit. At the very least, it'll soften the varnish, and that's. Uh, just as as dangerous and uh, so I don't recommend trying to do this so first thing that I do when I get an instrument in I, I want to look it over see if there's any cracks uh, any chipped out varnish so as you can see right here and, and this is something that you're going to need to be aware of too even if you're not doing a full cleaning but you're just kind of just doing a, a wipe down maybe trying to get the dust under control this is what happens when you scrub so basically if I take a cloth and I'm trying to clean the instrument I'm doing this that's my thumb and maybe my thumbnail scratching up the varnish. That's how that happens. So, you know, points for trying to clean your instrument, uh, but maybe a couple off for doing it a little bit too rough. That's that's what happens there. So, I've checked over the instrument. Let's just say, you know, seams are open. Nothing's nothing's going on there. So, what a luthier is going to do to do a full cleaning is take everything off and clean it. Uh, what you're going to do as a just a just trying to clean off your instrument at home is just take your cleaning cloth, which you should have, whether it's an old t-shirt, uh, maybe a nice cotton rag that you that you have, uh, not something from the garage that has oil all, all over it, but just fresh, clean rag. Uh, you take one of these and, and and just gently wipe it off. What you're trying to do is basically pretend like you're dusting off the instrument. So now this is dry. Uh, but it is a, a cloth, not a paper towel. I'm just trying to lightly get any kind of dust residue off. 
and, and, and that's that. That's all it took. Now, if you do that every time that you're done playing and you get your strings, get the fingerboard, wipe that off, especially down here where you've got some neck juice all over it, get that all off, just dry that off, wipe it off, and, and you're good to go. And that, that's really it. That's all you, got, you really have to do. Sometimes the back will get a little grimy. Just do a nice little rub, polish down, your fingers. Now, look, that took only a few seconds. Now, that's typically all you have to do when you're done playing. And you get all the rosin off. And if you do that every single time, then it makes it so you don't get a buildup of grime. Now, let's say you didn't do that, and it's all grimy at this point. Now, this is where the virus issue is kind of uh, going around on the internet at the moment and in the news. And uh, nobody's really asking what to do with the instruments on, on the news, but it's in the forums, and people are asking their teachers and get phone calls, so... Uh, here's what we got to do. First, you're going to take your paper towel. Now, remember how I said don't use alcohol ever, 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 ever? Well, this is where you can. But you have to do it right. Now, that's that's the big question. How do I do it right? And we tell people how to do it sometimes. Now, if you're, if you're a student, if you're just starting out, please don't do this yourself. Have your teacher do it. Um, maybe have your parents watch this video, and then maybe they can do it. But please, 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 don't do this because you know, everybody makes mistakes, everybody spills, and alcohol is the quickest way to ruin your instrument. Later on, like I said, I promise, we're going to ruin an instrument on purpose, so you get to see it. But don't do this, okay? Now, if you are confident and you can do this uh, as an adult, as someone who has the experience, just uh, please be very careful. Now, you'll see I moved the violin out of the way. Now, I did that. Because I'm accident prone, and so are many of you, I'm not taking my hand off of this bottle while it's open. Okay? Now, I'm going to take this cloth. I folded it up. You saw me fold it up. And uh, the paper towel. I'm going to stick it on the top. Make sure it's a nice clean seal. Just get a little bit of alcohol on it. That's it. That's all I need. All right? Now, I'm going to set that down. Put the cap back on the bottle. Move it completely out of the way. If that spills, I don't want it to get on the instrument. Okay? Now, here's the next thing. From here on out, and really in general you should, I'm only holding the neck of the instrument, okay? And if I get alcohol on my fingers on anything and I touch the varnish, game over. We're, we've messed up, so you don't want to do that. Now, the safe places to use alcohol. Now, you've seen this has been sitting for just a few seconds. It's not soaked. It's very, very wet. In fact, you touch it, it's cold. It's not wet. So that's a key point. You want that to happen. Now, you can take that and you can wipe down chin rest like that now be very careful do not let this touch the varnish at all anything that is painted or varnished will come off on your cloth you don't want that to happen now that being said some of these chin rests are painted and uh, so you will pull off some black onto your cloth so I'm uh, sorry that that's just how some things are now you'll notice I've got some experience I am using the holding the instrument a little bad. I know I, I, I said I would not to do that. If you can hold it by the neck the whole time, do it. Okay, so I'm going to get this right here. Now, if you have a shoulder rest key, by all means, take that off, and you can give it a much thorough cleaning. If you don't have a shoulder rest key, do not use a paper clip. Ask your teacher to do it for you. They can take it off. You can clean it off, stick it back on. Fine. Don't pry it off either. You'll damage the instrument, but a shoulder rest key is key. Now, the reason for that is because if you see here, right, in this area, there's a block in there. We'll get that to that in another episode. There's a block there, and next to the block is nothing, absolutely nothing. So if you over-tighten this, what you're actually going to do is warp the rib. You're going to make it fold. All right, so we've got the, sh the, the chin rest there. Next, you can get right here the tailpiece. That should be a composite material. It could be ebony. Um, on nicer instruments, it's typically ebony. On older instruments, it's typically ebony. And look at this. See that right there? Got some nastiness. That is not paint. That is not ebony. That is that's some some leftovers from somebody's chin. So yeah, we're getting some gun some gunk off on that. Now, like I said, if this was an instrument coming in for me to clean, we would take all of this down. I just don't want you to do that because if you do that. Everything falls apart. So we're assuming that everything's all in one piece. Now, the next thing you can do, you can get your strings. Get your strings. Clean those off. 
The alcohol is not going to hurt them, especially since this is not wet. Remember, it's not wet. Just clean those off. Get down in there, both sides. Now, be gentle. And you can see I don't have a lot of tension on these strings, but I'm still being careful when I get to that bridge. And I'm doing this loose on purpose. Yours is probably going to be under tension. That's okay. But you'll see here, I'm still being gentle. I don't want to knock the bridge over. So be gentle, but be firm enough to actually get to the fingerboard. Now here's where you're gonna fold that, get in there, and wipe down that fingerboard. And again, if it's ebony, you're not hurting a thing. If it's painted, you will remove some paint, but eh, it's kind of, if, it, if you have a painted fingerboard, it's probably not an expensive instrument anyway. And it's probably, I'd still do it just because if you're worried about germs, eh, you know, you, you can have, you have nice pretty paint, or you can have germs, you know, you, you gotta have to kind of make the choice. But uh, you can always take it to a violin shop and they can do it. If, uh, if it is painted and they're doing this and some of the paint starts to wear off, uh, there's ways we can restore it. Or maybe you like it that way, that's, that's fine too. Now the next part is this back part of the neck. Now normally this is uh, varnished very thinly. Um, I have heard people say it's not varnished at all. I'd be guilty of saying that too because it might as well not be. But what it actually is, it's a thin layer of varnish. It's the ground coat, uh, maybe a couple clear coats, but it's not color varnish is the key there. Um, now, as you play the instrument, you eventually wear through the varnish to the ground, and your natural oils in your hand will kind of harden, and it's kind of gross to think about, but this whole area ends up becoming kind of sealed over time. And if it does wear through, then you can always get it redone, and, and that's, that's something you can do as well. Don't take alcohol to this because you will wear through to the wood, um, depending on how bad, the, how bad it is. In the ideal situation, if you were to rub this down, you would just remove in some of the varnish and you'd get to the ground and maybe not pass through that. But still, alcohol is very good at loosening up material and then removing it. And that's why we're using a paper towel. We want this stuff to come off of here. But the next thing, so we're gonna skip that. The next thing you can do is wipe your pegs down. Those are pretty safe. And again, be gentle. You don't want to turn the tuning off too much. If you do loosen it, give it to your teacher to tune unless you know how to tune because you'll break a string. Okay, uh, you can kind of get the button here if you want, just a little bit. But that's really all you can do. That's about as, as, as much as you can do with alcohol to disinfect the instrument. Now that's all the safe stuff. Now you can use um, little packets like I've seen like hand wipes that you get when you have ribs at a restaurant or your fingers are just greasy and, and you get, get one of those little packets that you want to use. Those are okay, but the problem with those is that they are very, very wet. And number one, when you're using stuff to clean instrument, you don't want it to be wet. So if you are going to use a wet wipe kind of situation or, or one of those alcohol pads, just open the packet, open the cloth all the way up and let that set for a, a just a few minutes or, or seconds, however long it takes for it to be cold but not wet so cold um, alcohol the way that it works is it dissolves very quickly that's why we like it but it also you know kills a lot of stuff now you don't have to dilute the alcohol while you're while you're doing all this work and um, it's probably safer to do it but as you're very careful and you don't touch the varnish at all then you're pretty safe now as for the rest of this if you are concerned about the rest of your instrument take it to a professional take it to a luthier to clean because we can use alcohol to, to, to clean instruments because it, it's something uh, very similar to French polishing. And there is a way to do it, but you have to be trained and confident in doing it. If I take alcohol to this rag, touch it on the instrument, I'm going to ruin it. But if I take uh, just a little bit of alcohol to a rag with oil and uh, do a kind of pseudo French polish, that's a little bit safer. It still has the potential to damage the instrument, but it's a lot safer. And I would ask them, do you have experience French polishing? Would you be willing to disinfect an instrument with alcohol? Is there a way that you can do that safely? If they say no, don't press it because they're not, they're not gonna wanna do it. Uh, if someone came in and asked me that and uh, we didn't have this kind of uh, outbreak going on, I would probably say, uh, probably not a good idea to do that, but in the current light, maybe. It just depends on the instrument. Now, some are stronger than others. Some will, like if you brought in to me something um, around $300, a violin around $300. More than likely it's made with a lacquer or some kind of really, really, really tough varnish. 
that might be able to withstand it a little bit, but still, don't do it at home. Take it to a luthier. So uh, I showed you what you can do with alcohol to clean your instrument. Hopefully that answers some questions there. Now, next, let's actually go on to the damaging kind of stuff. So here we are. Let's get to it. So first question. Well, you know what? I'm going to actually go ahead and show you what it's like to do alcohol, what I can do. So uh, for this, first off, let's just say I got this instrument in. I'm going to clean it off. First thing I want to do is try to get off any grime. So we're going to use my water. And I use a spray bottle just because it's convenient. It means I can control exactly how much water in there. Like anything else, I don't want wet. I, I want it to be cold because what cold tells me is that something's evaporating. And I'm just going to kind of give it a quick little wipe down. And what this is going to kind of do is, number one, it's going to show me how much dirt. Because dirt's going to come off with just water. Just a little bit. And that's going to just kind of tell me how much of this is dirt, how much is oil and grime. And just give me kind of an idea of how the varnish is going to react. Now, some varnish, for example, on that other violin, you saw that, that kind of scratch on it. If I were to take water to that, I could probably re remove the varnish because the water is going to get underneath the varnish and lift it off of the wood. It's not really bonded to the wood on that one. And that could be just because of the type of varnish it is, how it sets on the instrument, uh, how long it had to, get to actually sit there, how well it was made. And a lot of varnish tends to be really chippy um, to, to a certain point. So as you can see, just the water and got quite a bit of little dirt there. So that's that. Now, I could go a little bit more in depth, and I probably would, but for the sake of the video, let's just keep going. So next step, so now I've got most of the varnish kind of, kind of dust and dirt off of it. What's left is that nice stripe there from where the fingerboard was on this particular instrument. This is a damaged instrument. I'm just using this as an example. Um, and I also won't feel so bad if I mess up on video. <laughs> so you can see that kind of dull area. That's from grime and just years of not being clean because it's been under the fingerboard. So for that, I can go ahead and do the next step. Now, and this is where we as a violin shop would actually use the uh, kind of our own mixture of cleaning solution. So in this case, this is a fresh batch I made today, a cleaning solution. And it's a two part kind of cleaner. One part of it is a kind of polish and I'm gonna use the back of my hand. now. If, you know, I'll, I'll, full, full disclosure, in most cases, I would be wearing gloves, and you should be too if you're actually doing this step. Now, again, I would not recommend anybody be doing this step, but I'm sure you're curious what we're actually going to do. So this has a little bit of a cleaner in it. And what this actually does is this is going to simultaneously lift off some of that rosin gunk and polish the instrument. Now, what actually is polish? That's kind of a interesting question there. So there's different types and there's different methods of making an instrument shiny. Now, if you look to what actual polish is, in general, it's going to be some kind of slight abrasive or some other method of, of kind of agitating a surface to kind of make it one coherent or cohesive um, structure. And, and what that does is it, it reflects light as one solid surface. So basically, the easy way of looking at it is it fills in the gaps. It either fills in the gaps by making the entire surface one nice smooth surface, or it fills in the gaps by filling it with some other kind of gunk. Uh, now, that's why, in most cases, a luthier is going to tell you don't use a polish. Because if you're using a polish, number one, you're probably just kind of spreading the gunk around like I'm doing right now a little bit. So you can see it's starting to look a little bit nicer. Eh, it's kind of got a nice little shine to it. And it's shiny. But and right there, you can see where the white light hits it and it just kind of blows up yellow. That's kind of nice because that's actually a decent varnish on this instrument. Even though it's kind of older, it's a student model, you can see when the light hits it, it lights up. Painted violins don't do that. So anyway... They're going to tell you not to do it because, number one, you can damage the varnish while you're doing it. And number two, a lot of polishes on the market, all they're actually doing is filling in the gap with gunk. And 
and and while it looks shiny for a little bit once that gunk whatever it is that they're filling it in with once that kind of dissolves evaporates kind of fades you're left with a very dull surface and uh, unfortunately a lot of stuff that's marketed towards violin cleaning tends to do that there are some really nice ones out there uh, some that really smell really good too uh, not that you should be sniffing it but they do smell good and that's kind of nice uh, this particular one smells kind of good and it is it is a kind of a mix that we make here using different materials and I'm not going to tell you what those are and link them because I don't want you going out and doing it so uh, I will say um, the basic parts are one is a actual polish that's made for this kind of uh, work and the other is a type of degreaser basic oil dissolver kind of thing and what that actually does is it helps get rid of any of the grime that's on top and at the same time giving it a nice little buff. So what the polish is actually doing in this case is it's roughing up the surface so slightly on a microscopic level and what that actually does is it, it kind of unifies that surface and helps you get rid of the grime. So as you can see now it's uh, quite quite smooth. There's still a lot of lines in there that, that I would like to fi fix from the... <laughs> I've got to get this mirror image kind of thing going on. There we go. So you can still see that line there from where the fingerboard used to be. That line of dirt and grime. But it's starting to look kind of nice and shiny. And because of the, the kind of mixture that I use here and that I make, um, I'm pretty confident that that's actually going to keep it shine until some grimy fingers get all over it and start getting it all grimy again. Uh, now, that's kind of a, a basic approach to how we get something nice and clean uh, fairly quickly. And that's not going to damage the instrument. If it was a, a higher level instrument, like something $3,000, $2,000, 5,000. Definitely if it's 5,000 we wouldn't be doing this. Uh, now the reasons behind that is that when you get to a certain point varnishes tend to be very sensitive to what you do to them. So uh, the gist of it, just to recap, alcohol is okay on your fingerboard, on your tailpiece, on your chin rest, on your strings, the button, ebony, anything but the varnished wood basically. And uh, probably don't get it on the fret. You can use you can use the alcohol on the strings. It's safe. You can use it on the fingerboard. It's safe. Just uh, you will remove paint if it's a painted fingerboard. And I'm sorry, so if, if that's the case, just try just to get the strings and maybe just barely brush the fingerboard just enough to clean it, but don't be scrubbing it. You will remove paint. Okay. Um, same with the chin rest. A lot of chin rests, modern fake chin rests are painted. If it's plastic, you might make it dull a little bit, but again, that's kind of a cosmetic thing, the, the chin rest. And if you have to choose between having a really germy, gunked up chin rest and maybe cleaning it off, uh, I'd say clean it off. And besides, chin rests, $15, $25 will get you a new chin rest. You might just consider going out and getting a new Okay, so that's the cleaning stuff. Uh, what about the damaging stuff? What about the stuff that's the rumors? What about cleaning wipes, germ juice? Uh, what about the green stuff? Alcohol. What happens when you drop alcohol on your violin? So let's, let's get to it. So first off, I've got a cello top here. All right. It's kind of dusty. I have a lot of fun with this one. Um, this came off of a, an old instrument. It's a student model instrument. Let's get some of that dust off. I did the smart thing and set this right beside my saw, so it gets dusty all the time. Let's see. First off, let's try some germ juice. So let's just get that. And we're going to exaggerate here. So again, never do this at home, but I can do it because I've got parts just laying around. So you see, I've got a nice glob of that stuff on there. And I don't know what's going to happen. I've never done this one before. So we'll have some fun with it. The general idea is that if you put anything that has any kind of chemical, any kind of alcohol base on your instrument, it's going to ruin the varnish. And that's kind of a big thing. A lot of people will look at something and say, oh, it, it says it's safe for wood furniture or finished furniture or finished this, finished that. Varnish isn't exactly a finish. Um, in general, what you're looking at as a finish is something that's sealed and made durable to weather, to normal wear and tear. Varnish on a violin in the violin family, it, its primary function is to seal the wood to keep the wood from absorbing moisture, uh, a little bit of protection, a little bit of looks, but 
its its main focus is not to create a shell of indestructible material around the instrument. So it, I wouldn't necessarily call it a finish. Uh, and it dissolves very easily. And one day we'll, we'll get into one of our future videos, uh, what's one way that we can make some varnish. So that's kind of fun. There's a lot of uh, fun kind of potion making going on in the back. Okay, so here we go. That's what happens with your germ juice. Oh, let's see if I can get this camera out of the way. But you see, you see what it's done a little bit of? Now, a lot, a lot of times you might, you might look at that, and unfortunately on camera, it doesn't look as bad as it actually is. You see that kind of big spot there, and you see those lines? That's actually really messed up the varnish. It's actually made it dull. It scratched it a little bit. Um, here we go. I, I'll tell you what, at the end of the video, I'll, I'll just kind of pick up the camera and do some hand stuff so you can see, see how bad that is. All right, so that's the germ juice. All right, next, let's uh, remember. So first quadrant, germ juice, next. Let's use some green cleaner. Just kind of spray that on. And you might say, oh, let's use a new towel. Let's not get cross-contamination there. Well, you definitely can't mistake the smell of that stuff. Now, honestly, I think this stuff might be the safest, but still, I wouldn't use it because you never know exactly how it's going to react. And if your instrument has any kind of crackle, that's the where the varnishes kind of come apart a little bit, any kind of anything like that, uh, whatever you spray on it, whatever you use on it, could actually get into those cracks and potentially spread it out, make it worse. Now, on this instrument, it's actually not too bad. But again, I would say don't do it because you never know how it's going to react. So on there, it actually didn't mess it up, which is kind of kind of surprising, which is actually kind of nice. So what, what that tells me is be very careful about what you're actually using because it's still dulled it a little bit, but not as bad as the germ juice. Now, how effective is the green stuff at cleaning um, against germs? I don't know. Again, I'm not a doctor. I don't know anything about that. But at least diluted as it is, it did not seem to mess up this really student quality instrument with the painted on stuff. This is probably a lacquer. Don't do this to a varnished instrument. And if you don't know if it's a varnished instrument, uh, don't, don't just don't do it. Just act like it is. But it looks like, at least for you school teachers out there, uh, I would say if you have instruments there that you're kind of worried about cleaning, Maybe the green stuff isn't as bad, but I still wouldn't recommend it. If you're going to do it, treat it like alcohol. Clean, put it on the on a paper towel, make sure it's really diluted. Basically, it's water. You don't want to let it set. And besides, as it, is it effective? That, I don't know. We'll have to do some more testing on that. So let's do a later video on that, see if it messes up any other varnishes. But as of right now, this, on this particular plywood, possibly potentially lacquered maybe really really durable varnish um, it didn't seem to mess it up too bad but it still does leave a little bit of leave a little bit to be desired so I would not absolutely say do not use any kind of cleaner on an instrument uh, that you have any value in at all so definitely don't do it uh, that being said if you have a bunch of school instruments that are obviously these plywood instruments um, don't spray it on directly. Maybe spray it on a cloth and do a test spot first. Your school instruments that are these plywood instruments could probably handle it. But again, this is just this particular instrument, this varnish. Please don't blame me if you use it and it messes up your varnish. So there's safer things that you can do. When in doubt, take it to a luthier. If you're in, in the backwoods and you don't have access to one, you know, do it at your own risk. But please be very cautious and besides the other thing that, that we do notice is any kind of cleaner that you use will soften the varnish a little bit it'll make it sticky so if you do any kind of cleaning at all teachers please be sure to do it on like a weekend and set it aside so it can dry um, even if you only use a slightly damp cleaning apparatus you don't want that to damage the instrument now do I recommend it absolutely not because I'm a luthier there's other ways to clean it and I always recommend take it to a luthier if you're in a pinch, if you're a teacher with a 
with a classroom full of plywood instruments and you have parents asking, how are you cleaning our instruments? We're worried about this stuff. What are you using? You could say, well, uh, I've got this one solution that, I, that I've tried out on a few instruments. It seems to be okay, but I still wouldn't recommend it on anything else. So take that for what it is. Again, I do not recommend it. Always check with the luthier. And because they can tell you a little bit more about the varnish. And this is a YouTube video. You know, I'm not... If I had this in my, my own shop, again, this is my instrument. This is a this is a junker. I don't mind ruining it, which is why I'm trying it out. So don't do it. Don't do it. Would I do this on my own personal instrument that I made? No, absolutely not. But I would do something a lot more dangerous that you guys are not going to do because it's French polish. All right, next. What can we do next? What happens when you pour alcohol? I know I showed you that little spot. Oh, cleaning wipes. Let's use a cleaning wipe. Now this I did test earlier. I thought, oh, maybe, maybe. Because looking at the ingredients, it didn't seem so bad. But then you smell it. And you go, oh, I don't know. I don't know about that. So here we go, cleaning wipe. Uh, let's try that lower, lower spot here. Now, the problem with the cleaning wipe is this stuff is meant to really clean. And uh, unfortunately, it thinks that varnish needs to be cleaned too. Now on this particular instrument, let's see what happens. It doesn't feel like it's getting rough, but at least on the the other one that I, that I tested it on before we started the video, it uh, dulled it. It made it very, very dull, which I could probably fix with a nice polish, a French polish. Um, it won't fix it using a standard polish because, again, standard polish, all it's doing is filling in the, the gaps. So that made it nice and shiny, but as it, as it dissolves, it's kind of getting dull. And that might be just from the dirt just being smudged around. Because here's the thing. When you're cleaning, you really want to lift off the dirt. All this is doing is dissolving it and smearing it around. That's also why I don't like hand sanitizer so much. Because uh, all you're doing is you might kill the stuff, but it's just smearing it around. So you're still walking around with your hands full of dead germs, but they're still there. And some of them might still be alive. Uh, but you've just smeared it around. That's why water is such a thing, and running water to be specific. Yeah, you can see that. As it, as it starts to uh, dry, as it starts to dry off, you can see it kind of just kind of getting dull, that circle you, circular area there. So I would say stay away from cleaning wipes. They are not meant to work on varnished material, but they are okay on finished material. So there is a difference there, and it really depends on, on what it is. So for example, your dining room table if it's not finished in the traditional way using shellac or some kind of varnish like this, it might be okay on that. But remember, those are made to withstand eating off of. Would you eat off of your cello top? I don't think so. So don't do that. All right. Um, the last one was uh, alcohol. What happens when you do alcohol? And we can see some of the residue from that too. Now, remember I said you don't want to spill the alcohol. Why don't you want to spill? Well, I'm not going to spill it because there's a very expensive violin over there. But let's see what happens when you get too much alcohol and it touches the varnish. So let's really soak this up and get that on there. So here's the top. I'm going to scrub some, some alcohol. And I'm not really pressing hard. I don't want you to get the idea that I'm really trying to force this stuff to, work, to be wrong, to, to, to fail. I mean, obviously, I was expecting the green stuff to fail, and it didn't really fail that bad. But there you go. So you can see, even faster than the cleaning wipe, just look at that mess. And if I keep going, then I'm just going to smear it around and get down to the ground. If I pour varnish or the, the alcohol straight onto this, you'll see in a later video how we make some varnish. And the varnish is basically alcohol dissolving the varnish. <laughs> and uh, that's what we use to put varnish on the instrument. So as you can imagine, if we wanted to reverse the process, alcohol is a really good way to do it. Maybe one day we'll strip an instrument too. You can see why if you go into a violin shop and say, will you strip this for me? They'll say no. It's a lot of work. Okay, so there's that green, that green cleaner on this lacquered student instrument. It really didn't do anything. It's not certainly not making it shiny, but it looks like it might have cleaned off some of it. Again, this is very diluted stuff. Um, if you do decide to go that route, teachers, please make sure it's heavily diluted in water. Um, I don't remember the exact ratio, but look at, look at the color of this. It's, uh, it's pretty diluted. It, it actually might be a little bit stronger on camera because of color saturation. But 
basically this looks like a really 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 light mint minty green kind of a something you don't want to drink but you might put in your engine okay so that's uh that's that so anyway that's it for um for this and uh, we're getting a little bit long on time and what's something i forgot to do everybody that i said you have to do cap your bottles don't do like i just did cap your bottle what if i took that that top and knocked this over well now i'd have three instruments with alcohol damage all over them so don't do that oh one last thing what about your bows okay yeah bows so basically it looks like this this is a fiberglass bow if you could tell look at that frog that uh, end end screw there we go. that frog that's plastic so this kind of bow this is a fiberglass bow and it a lot of you probably have this bow this one you can use the same method that we used for the fingerboard which is very 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 uh, light alcohol now that being said do not let it touch the hair because the hair has rosin all over it if alcohol touches rosin it turns it into a gum when it turns it into a gum it's going to get sticky and it's going to fill the pores uh, which you can see this is a very awful bow as far as um, the use see how shiny that and kind of yellow that hair is that's some nasty hair that is just oversaturated with oil and gunk and rosin even these bows these are painted if they're old enough then you can probably take off the brown paint so you'll ruin your bow uh, don't so that's why i always tell people it's got to be light you can't be scrubbing at it if you scrub it it's going to ruin it remember the whole goal right now you're not trying to clean your bow you're not trying to make it look shiny this is just if you're trying to disinfect it if you're worried about germs and passing along anything like that just taking a little alcohol you could probably do it do not touch the hair and uh, don't scrub if it needs anything more than that then take it to you to, to get it rehaired probably needs rehaired anyway that needs to be done once a year so that's that type of bow if you have this type of bow this is a carbon fiber bow uh, this is going to be a coin flip and you can tell it's carbon fiber it's got that weave in it it's got it's really it's a woven carbon bow I actually uh, quite like this one this one we have made for our shop and uh, these are pretty pretty neat now these are pretty pretty popular and pretty standard across the board uh, again these have a a type of uh, finish on the outside which may or may not be susceptible to alcohol but again if you're worried about it uh, do a light test like down here and do not scrub it remember you're not cleaning it you're just trying to to maybe disinfect it a little bit with some alcohol and again don't let it touch the good thing there um, if you have one that looks like this this one may or may not be carbon fiber but again you're running into the same situation it's a composite bow and it is probably painted and if you use any kind of alcohol stronger than what I suggested uh, you probably will remove some black on there and then it won't be shiny and you're gonna be sad so again all of this if you're going to do it just really be careful and and I would not recommend it unless you are absolutely competent uh, and confident in what you're doing and uh, I, I still would not recommend have your luthier do it because well if they mess it up they can fix it and if they mess it up then that's on them not on you if you mess it up then you have to pay someone to fix it okay so all that all the warnings done bottom line don't do it if you're going to do it be careful and do it right um, and uh, as always you know check with your luthier okay here's a quick follow-up it's been a couple hours for everything to dry, but here in the top left, there's the result of the germ juice, I believe, is what we did first. You can see that a little bit better. I have a little control over the mic and the camera now. So there you go. You can see the swirl pattern and how if we keep going, we're going to start damaging that varnish even further. So it leaves it really dull. And what that actually is, is the varnish being melted by the chemicals. So that one is definitely a no. And then down here in the bottom left, honestly, I can't remember if this was the alcohol or if this was the cleaning, uh, what do we call it? The disinfecting wipes. So uh, it's very similar. So that's what we've got there same thing only much worse since it's kind of white 
in a few spots. I think that might be the alcohol. Yeah, we can check through the old video there. Okay, and then over here, there's the other one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the cleaning, the disinfecting wipes. So you can see how it's actually damaged it quite a bit. That big, dull spot. This is, this is not good. And you can see here some old damage that was repaired at some point. Not mine, but you can see how it, it can be tricky to try to color match. And when you put some varnish over it, if you don't do it right, you kind of leave some residue on top. All right, and then here's at the top left. This is where we used the green cleaner. Now, that's the most interesting. Like I said, I don't recommend any cleaner for your instrument. However, for teachers, if you have a bunch of really low end, these plywood, really, really dense, hard varnishes on the low end instruments that are de designed specifically for schools and rentals, it might be okay. But again, if you're gonna use it, just be very careful. Please don't blame me if it gets ruined. Uh, use it at your own risk. But that's the result I have on this one. I am very curious. I would like to pursue some more tests with that on some nicer varnishes just to see what happens. But yeah, that was actually the only okay result. Anyway, um, okay, so that's the end of the video. And it's been quite a long one. It's the first one, I know. We'll try to edit it a little bit. But uh, leave down below if you have any questions, any suggestions, if you want to see something if you want to see me actually really destroy an instrument, let me know. Maybe, maybe we'll find something um, that we can destroy and put back together. Or maybe someone will bring in one. I had somebody bring in an instrument that was run over by a car before. We put that back together, and it's kind of fun. So anyway, uh, leave some comments, suggestions. If you like what you see, please subscribe. As If we get subscriptions, then maybe we can make this uh, a reoccurring thing instead of just a couple one-offs. So um, let me know what you think. Just uh, please subscribe. Like us if you liked it. And uh, hopefully we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye.